what was the overall impression of the of the first week of spring ball? Loved our uh, attitude, effort, approach. Um, obviously, to uh, the extent that we need to, um, the the execution of, of the installs and um, everything that's a little new, we've got a long way to go. But um, we're not going to add anything new today. Um, so hopefully, we'll see kind of how they retain, you know, from a week off um, from the first three practices to today. So uh, thought that, that the return meeting last night was as good as I've seen. Uh, typically, you worry about people being tardy or flat tire or, or whatever, and we had zero of that. Everybody was back on time early. Team meeting today was really, really good. Had a great day of recruiting. Uh, it's been it's been a good day. So hopefully practice will uh, finish off the day really well. Uh, coach, you know, can you talk a little bit about how you spent the week with the players on spring break? And did you get any reports? Were there any players that stayed in town to work and try to get ahead of the game in terms of installs and running the new system? Well, I, I, I let the entire staff off for spring break. I mean, we haven't had a uh, typically. The normal year, you know, you would hope the dead period of February gives us a breather, but um, we went straight from recruiting to um, installing and learning each other in February, so we had no time. So the staff, some are still trying to get their families here, I think, and um, so I, I, I can't really answer. I do know some stayed in town because I talked to several, but. Um, um, Dom, I'm sure, had Dom's not going anywhere. He never goes anywhere. He just, uh, I'm sure he had hours that it was open if some wanted to do that. But uh, I, I don't, I don't have enough knowledge of that to speak on it. So um, I think everybody kind of needed a break, and um, including myself. And you got a good chance to recharge from a tough recruiting period. Did uh, Jill and I? Um, we were in town the first part of the week, which. Truthfully, my, my favorite vacation um, when I have one would be to get up, come to the office, go play golf, come back to the office, sleep in my own bed. That, that, that's honestly kind of like my, my wife makes fun of me all the time, but, she, but that's really kind of like my favorite vacation. I'm not a big travel person or anything, but we did at the end of the week travel to uh, Florida and um, got to see uh, Coach Miles on and Christy, who are dear friends of ours, and uh, playing a little golf tournament that uh, was a big golf tournament, actually. But uh, so so we we had a combination of uh, of things, but I did definitely enjoyed my week. Tom, yeah. I'm sorry, Coach Barrett. Yeah, I was I honestly don't know. Uh, we have such a great product. Um, you know, when I'm sitting in those meetings and I don't have much of a voice, you know, I've, uh, I just said, you know, our, our game is, is in our last meeting I was in that our game is, uh, I think as exciting as, uh, as any sport that is out there. And I just hate to see us tinker, um, with, with too many rules. I'm being told that that's gonna eliminate six to eight plays a game, possibly. So that shouldn't affect it terribly. Um, you know, I've always been the one that says, you know, the people that we should, in my opinion, that we should be truly trying to protect in the length of games is the people that are in Jordan Hare Stadium. I mean, the people sitting on their, their couches and they choose to do that, great. I'm glad they're tuning in. We need that. Um, but the ones that – but they, they can get up and go get a beverage and, and another piece of sausage and cheese plate uh, in their kitchen and come back during the commercial. And, you know, the, we're all sitting in there waiting for the – so I've, I've never understood why we just don't 
try to on the front end maybe adopt what every other sport is doing now and that's pitcher in pitcher and let's just keep playing and um you know i don't know the nfl model is i think two of the timeouts in the in a quarter are pitcher in pitcher and they keep playing the one is a true like we experience but um so i really don't i don't have an opinion yet i will after the season i'm sure so far right class Yeah, I, I don't uh, – have they decided the format yet? You know, so, you know, I, I, I'm kind of of the makeup until – if I can't control it, it's probably not worth me worrying about. And I just I, – I have zero control, and I trust uh, John Cohen and Dr. Roberts, and, um, you know, they're sitting in those meetings, and they're, they're going to do the best they can to do what's best for Auburn University. And – Whatever that ends up being, you know what? Um, we all knew coming into this league when we took these jobs that uh, you're going to have a hard schedule. Some of us have it harder than others and, and are used to that. And it is what it is. And me complaining about it or worrying about it certainly is not going to help us prepare for it. And so I just, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, if you ask me, you know, after after they've decided on the format, I probably could tell you who I'd like for our crossovers to be, but it's probably not going to be those. And uh, so it's just really not me worrying about worth me me worrying about it. Is that the policy you're saying you'd rather not share when you prefer to Oh, I don't listen. Uh, you know, I mean, every year is probably probably quite different, but I, I would assume in whatever format they're going to give us that uh, we're we're probably going to have a, a couple tough draws. <laughs> It is what it is, and that's exciting for our fans and exciting for our kids. And um, but really, me me sitting around worrying about what will be decided on the format really probably doesn't help us one bit. Coach Farbach, Brian. Yes, you um, wanted to ask you about the first three practices. What did you see out of quarterbacks good, and maybe some things you want them to improve on this week? Uh, it's it's still. Um, the, the, the same thing that I said prior, they love what we're doing. I think they love our approach to coaching them. We're rotating them, giving them all the same equal opportunities. Um, there were some good things, and there were some not so good things. And it's the not so good things, can we get you know, more consistent at doing the better things? Um, and three practices is really not enough, but I've seen some good things from all three. Truthfully, the the last one that was a tough one to judge them on because I, I don't that 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 Friday that win was <laughs> it was an issue it, it was an issue for for throwing the football for sure uh, for everybody. So, um, but anxious to get back out with them. But love love their approach. I've seen some good things for sure from from all three. You have a couple here on the front right. You, I guess, what format are you sort of looking for it for, for Friday's scrimmage? What do you want to get out of that after having a week off? Yeah, I, I never know what exactly has been put out. So it, it's it's not going to be some uh, all-out scrimmage. It will be situational um, by then, whether it's uh, a second and seven period, play third down live, or a P and 10 period. But it, it's not. we're not quite ready uh, yet just to all out scrimmage. So uh, we're certainly not ready to tackle uh, our tailbacks yet or anybody, we're gonna protect them, but there will be some some fairly live situational stuff. Jason. Yeah, what are you looking for just from a team perspective these next couple of weeks as you start to kind of maybe get into a little bit of a, a rhythm of practice? Uh, what are you kind of wanting to see as you head towards the spring game? Well, alignment, assignment, and effort. Um, are we aligned correctly? We had a lot of those issues in practices one, two, and three on both sides. And uh, it, are we doing the right assignment and are we doing it with the right effort? And if we're doing our job as coaches, then that should be improving uh, from practice to practice to practice. And and uh, some of the, the stuff that you see that we saw in the first three hopefully diminishes some. 
And so it's really about those three things, whether we're in a scrimmage situation and we are playing this, this period of practice live or it's, it's thud or it's, or it's tag, you know, until I see us aligning correctly and playing with great technique and doing our assignment right and playing with great effort, you know, it's going to be hard for me to feel like we're improving at the rate that I want us to until I see those. Uh, Coach, uh, talk about the offensive line. Um, a lot of eyes are going to be on the development of that position. You know, what kind of progress are you guys making there? You've got a lot of newcomers uh, and how are they adapting uh, to doing, uh, doing what you're asking them to do? I was really pleased with, uh, with the O-line in the first few practices. And, you know, this will be the second one with pads on and the defense is starting to get more stuff in with more movements. and. That's when you usually probably leave practice feeling awful because we haven't practiced enough against these movements and it can make you look really bad. Um, but uh, I, I think we improved ourselves for sure and excited uh, about you know that group. I think they're, they're a group you can depend upon to, to really bring it every week to practice and every day. Um, I, I know that you know Too Tall and Gunner and Dylan and Avery are all um, guys that we feel like have to play for us that uh, we improved ourselves with obviously the current guys that we have. Tate Johnson's been an incredible leader in that room too. Is he the, would you call him the standout to this point in practice? Or is there anybody else who stands out? Uh, you know, I'm not ready to say it's, that he's standing out over anyone else. I just know that he, there's an expectation that we're trying to set and he wants to drive the train for that expectation. and. It matters to him, you know. Wearing Auburn on his chest means something, and uh, you can't have enough of those guys. Got a follow from your boss on the far right, coach. Um, how difficult is it to have an offensive line you have a guy from Tulsa, a guy from Juco, or these guys from different places? How difficult is it to merge that sort of cohesive unit? I don't see that as a, a, a great challenge. I mean, it happens every year, you know, whether it happens in January or whether it happens in August. But usually in January, you're adding quite a few pieces to your puzzle, whether they come from Tulsa or whether they come from high school. Um, you know, we, I didn't mention the high school mid-year enrollees that we had that are the same, that, you know, Connor Lou and Clay and um, Braden. And, you know, we're, we're, we're thrilled. We need a depth in that room to be able to practice. And so I don't think that's a huge challenge. That's something that we're kind of used to dealing with. And, um, you know, I think players by now, if they're realistic, they understand at this level, you know, every year we're trying to out recruit you. And that's the, not many coaches will say that, but that's the truth. You, you've got to compete every year to, to earn your time. And we're going to try again next year to go find another one that's, that's even better. And, um, but you still need all of them and, and forming them together when they're competing for playing time and also trying to form a great team. That's probably a, that, that, that's somewhat of a challenge for sure, but it's something that we're kind of used to.